Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time, I'm going to be playing in the AMX 1390. This is a tier nine French light tank, although it hasn't been at tier nine for all that long, just the last couple of patches. Although you could argue when it was at tier eight, it still had the same matchmaking as it does now. So, what has really changed with this vehicle that has made it now personally one of my favorite go-to vehicles for just having an absolute blast and having an utter riot and i've been having some of my best games in this tank in the last couple of patches now i'm going to be playing on corellia here we're going to be assaulting and i love to try and get towards this d4 area here that you see on the map because if you can try and get here you've got this whole basin around you which is going to provide you with fire support you can extend your view range all the way up to this area and just absolutely dominate the game from the center. Now look at this, we're going after the tier 9 French medium tank there. We catch him ill-prepared and take out definitely one of the most dangerous tanks on the enemy team in the first minute of the gameplay. Now the AMX 1390 has gone through some pretty dramatic changes. Previously, everybody will know that this vehicle used to have 1,440 average damage in its magazine, and that's because it had a six-round autoloader with 240 alpha damage per shot. Now, that was absolutely monstrous. That allowed you to go one-on-one -on -one with an enemy AMX 1390, and if you managed to penetrate, I guess, five out of six of your shells back when this tank used to have 1,100 hit points, then you would be taking it out, and that made it very, very interesting back in the old esports game mode in the, the 742 when everybody was playing tier 8, and lots of people took AMX 1390s. Then when the T-54 lightweight came out, that, that kind of replaced things a little bit. Now, Wargaming have revamped the AMX 1390. They have taken two whole rounds out of the autoloader, but they've reduced the magazine reload speed massively. Previously, this thing took 40 seconds or thereabouts to reload its six round magazine. Now it's gonna be doing it in 23 seconds before you take into account crew skills. This vehicle's DPM has gone up by 30%, and so it just feels so much more active. Previously, I didn't ever really feel that I needed that 1,440 magazine, and having 960 average damage and also the penetration to be able to use it, as the penetration has been buffed by 35 millimeters up to 205 on its standard rounds, the AMX 1390 just feels way more competitive now than it used to, at least if, unless you were firing premium APCR. And now the vehicle's got standard APCR, which means the shell velocity flies absolutely beautifully through the air. 1,163 meters a second shell velocity just feels absolutely glorious and kind of more like a, a medium tank than a light tank. But I guess all of the tier 9 light tanks are kind of firing APCR on their standard rounds. I just love the speed of this vehicle as well. And also, it's very small. Not a lot of people take that into account with the 1390, is that if you bomb it around, you can manage to catch targets like this. Look at this T25 pilot. He's cooking up. We burn him down there. 2,500 damage and 1,600 spotting in three and a half minutes. Not too bad, right? The fact that you can just blaze it around the battlefield, it is a run and gun playstyle that I just absolutely adore. Now previously, if I was caught reloading a gigantic magazine, I felt like I was outside the combat for just far too long. However, now that I can just reload pretty much every 20 seconds, I'm always thinking about the next target and getting in there and unloading. And you might be noticing that this kind of Four round magazine seems to be doing the job in this kind of a scenario. If I'd had six, I just feel like it would have been useless. Uh, you would have just had been left awkwardly at the end of a magazine with two rounds left. And oh god, this is a bit of a tricky situation. ISU 152, hopefully we roll really high here. There's a chance we might take him out in the next couple of shots. Oh no, not with that now. We'd have to roll extra high to shut him down. And even though we do leave him on 52 hit points. Oh, he misses the Bulldog. You can see I had a quick flick back of the mouse there. Surprised that that M41 Walker Bulldog is still alive. And we are just running rings around our opponents literally right now. Just getting wherever we need to go unloading magazines using our mobility to avoid where shots might be coming from. A little bit of a wiggle there and we avoid the shell from the FB4202, the size of this tank, definitely one of its best assets. We get to shut down the artillery. There's only one thing I really don't like about this tank at the moment, and that is that you do not carry many shells of ammunition in the vehicle. 
40 rounds of 240 average damage. That means that this vehicle has a potential of 9,600. And so when you've dealt 4,700 damage in five minutes in a game, uh, you're gonna probably run out of your standard ammunition and be forced to fire some premium rounds. Because remember this is a tier nine tank and when you do meet tier tens, Good luck trying to penetrate them with 205 millimeters of penetration reliably against the, the true heavy tier 9 and the tier 10 targets. So I do keep, I think, about half and half ammunition in this vehicle. Um, some of the premium APCR rounds for when you do get into those scenarios. So I fire one at the T-34, fire my second. Oh no, it just tracks him. There's a third. And oh, we've been spotted. This is where you just got to close your eyes and hope. And oh, thank goodness, he dies. Secure our seventh kill. 5,300 damage and 1,800 spotting in just under six minutes. But let's not quite look at the post-game stats yet. Let's get stuck into some more gameplay. So one thing you might have noticed on Corellia and one thing you're definitely going to notice on El Haluf is just how much quicker the AMX 1390 can be to engage its targets. And that's because Wargaming have dramatically buffed the dispersion and the aim time of this vehicle. Previously, this tank had three seconds aim time. Now we're talking about 2.7 seconds aim time. And also the dispersion values when you're moving and when you're turning the turret have pretty much been buffed by about 40%. And so you're noticing that just the amount that we have to aim in the 1390 is not as significant as what it used to be. And that allows us to quickly engage that Scorpion G. We spotted him, we shut him down. Although unfortunately I also get spotted. It looks like maybe that Scorpion G caught a glimpse at me or possibly one of the light tanks or even one of the sneaky tank destroyers at the back but I just absolutely love being able to adventure forth and take out an enemy tank in literally the first minute of the battle this has been one of the most fun tanks that I have played in the last couple of patches I think all of the auto loading light tanks apart from the the M41 bulldog or as I've been calling it the dead dog with that auto loader definitely better to use the single shotgun at least in my opinion on the M41 walker bulldog but yeah all of the auto loaders apart from that tank just feel absolutely glorious the T71 in my opinion one of the best tanks tier for tier in the game at the moment and I think I'd probably be adding the AMX 1390 to that list now this matchup, fair enough, this is a good matchup and I am going to try and push my tank to the limits in this replay as we're going to be seeing. So having dealt with the Scorpion, having engaged that IKV-90B who was above me, now we're going to turn our attention to this T-49 who manages to put one into us but luckily just catches the rear of my tracks, doesn't enter my tank and he's going to come around the corner and he's going to start trading with me. I put one into him but I can't use the auto-loading potential of this vehicle. Um, um, okay. I don't know what that was. Maybe he was trying to say hi to me. Maybe he was trying to go and say, ha ha, you can't get me, quickie baby. But in fact, we actually did. I really hope he wasn't trying to feed me his frag. I, uh, that doesn't happen ever, usually. And please... Don't do that in game. If Vincent for some reason did know me, I, I want to play World of Tanks like everyone else, please. And also, don't just charge me recklessly, guys. I have feelings too, you know. No, but who am I kidding? If I was in your position and I saw me in a game, I'd probably do everything that I can to try and take myself out. So, I don't know. I, it's just one of those things, right? There's the, the good things and the bad things about becoming a little bit more famous inside the World of Tanks community, right? But, anyway, having dealt with that Yag Panther 2, well, not quite yet as he comes around the corner. Oh, darn, don't want to waste some shells here. Oh, one through the upper plate, that 205 millimeters of penetration, decent. Now we get to shoot the back of the KV-3. I'm just hoping we get an engine fire here. Come on, no, I didn't even see any crits as well. Doesn't look like we're going to be getting any extra damage on that tier 7 Soviet Heavy. Now also... One thing I just forgot to mention is, do you see how quickly the AMX 1390 can unload now? It's absolutely ludicrous. Previously, this vehicle's unload speed was 2.73. That was the same as the Bat Chatillon. Apart from the Bat Chatillon deals 390 damage instead of 240, which made the AMX 1390 at tier 8 just feel rather slow to be able to, to get the shells out. Talk about tanks that aren't show to get slow to get the shells out. The T-71 is one of those, but I think he bit off a little bit more than he can chew. And there is a big difference between a tier 7 light tank and a tier 9 light tank. Well, 
Then again, a fairly big difference. I mean, he's got a magazine of 900 as well with his six round autoloader, but with my 240 alpha and the fact that my unload speed is only 2.21 seconds intra clip reload, meaning that I can fire off my entire magazine from, I guess, like 3.6 seconds of the first shot. That is rather decent indeed. And so that means that we're just racking up the damage. And the view range and the mobility means that we can rack up the spotting as well. Uh, it's, it's bizarre in a way because Wargaming have tried so hard to make the tier 10 light tanks really not particularly competitive. But the tier... Uh, did I say tier 9? I mean the tier 10 light tanks, not very competitive. But the tier 9s just feel like such a beautiful mid-range to play. And having played the WZ-1321, although that is significantly better than the 132A, and also the Sheridan, I really think that vehicles like the 13105, maybe you might want to keep your 1390, and definitely keep your T-49, as the Sheridan's a little bit of a disappointment for me. But here we go, we finally put our final magazine of the battle in. There we go, finish off the T-20. Radley Walter secured. Will we get an extra shot into the back of the VK? No, we won't, because the Yosef Stalin tank on my team blew his head clean off. So two frenetic action-packed rounds in the tier 9 French light tank. On the first round on Corellia, we pick up a high caliber and a top gun for our seven kills and 5,300 damage. Wow, nearly three times what anyone else was able to achieve and 1,492 base experience points. Now we did fire a few APCR rounds here and also you might notice that I resupplied the consumables without them being half price, which unfortunately means that we did lose 21,000 credits, which isn't cool. And in retrospect, I think I'm gonna take one less premium magazine in the AMX 1390 to try and avoid having to waste the premium rounds because really we didn't need them in that game. And next up on El Haloof, I think this was one of my fastest Radley Walters medals of all time, especially in a tier nine tank. Eight kills in five minutes, a high caliber for the 4,500 damage that we dealt, a tank sniper for dealing a lot of that at long range. And this time, because we didn't have to resupply the consumables at full price, we do make a profit. So the Amex 1390 is, in my opinion, one of the most fun tanks you can play at tier nine, at least for a, a mid to skilled player. And there's never been a better time to pick one up and experience that run and gun glorious gameplay. And so I hope you enjoyed this aggressive all-in light tank gameplay. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments what are your current favorite light tanks in the game and why. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.